Hello YouTube, my name is Paul, I enjoy watchmaking, I enjoy watching YouTube videos of various people doing watchmaking, restorations, things like that, and I also enjoy watching videos of restoration of equipment, vintage tools, things like that. So I thought I would create a video of a restoration of a watchmaking machine, watch cleaning machine that I purchased off Facebook. So it's just arrived today, I'm going to unbox it, see what kind of condition it's in, see what we've got in the box and hopefully take this video on a bit of a journey of restoring it, painting it and putting it back into service. I haven't opened it, I've seen a couple of grainy pictures and a video of it spinning once it's plugged in. I don't particularly know what's with it, I think there's some jars and some baskets and um, took a bit of a risk on it. It wasn't that expensive. Uh, they do seem to go for quite a lot of money as watchmaking's become more popular, I think, through through YouTube in the last couple of years. So, without further ado, I'll get it cracked open. Doing this in my garage, so you'll have to forgive the uh, the background. And we'll see what we've got in the box. Thankfully, the seller marked it all as fragile and it became uh, DHL. I was a bit worried about having uh, the glass jars because I understand that the glass jars are quite difficult to get hold of at times, and the baskets as well uh, are not cheap on cousins. So, we shall see what we've got. At the top of it, it seems to be a a uh, kind of cream colour. Right, so this is just packing. So there's one package, more packing. Uh, anything in this? Nope, it's packaging. Get rid of all this. And we have another packet there, another packet there. Uh -huh. A large box of baskets. These are actually in reasonable condition. Um, looks like an alloy frame with some st maybe stainless mesh. There is. Um, a really thin, finer mesh one that could sit in the top. A medium mesh one for larger parts. One, two of them. Uh, what else we got? We got a, uh, another basket for sitting inside the top. This one seems like it's been painted actually as opposed to brass. Okay. We got a lid that's a bit monkey. Fits in there quite nicely. Um, I'm not sure what that is yet. Um, I've got a, the old dunker basket for ultrasonic stuff. It'd be quite handy from a small ultrasonic actually. Um, I'm not sure I'd use it on this. We have another basket that's the same size but finer mesh, another lid, a lid with some, some cutouts for parts to sit in, it's quite difficult to see hopefully but uh, yeah that's quite handy, that just sit inside, uh -huh. there we go, and some sort of divider, is that going to fit? It's like somebody's possibly made that and soldered it together. It's quite clever. Uh, it seems to fit in there quite nicely for separating, you know, bridges, um, main plates, things like that. We've got a tiny little 
Maybe that's a a basket for small parts and that one sits on the top. Yeah, it's got a hook for uh, attaching to something and the all important bit is the clamp for attaching to the bottom of the machine. I'm presuming that these are jars so to save save time and through the magic of camera work. I shall skip to them being open. So the seller did say that everything was covered in rouge and it wasn't joking, it absolutely stinks. Um, I'm quite surprised at the size of these things. These are actually massive. Um, I, I actually picture them being a lot smaller. I'm not sure why I'm so shocked, but three jars with lids. Um, absolutely manky. How long they've been sat for, I don't know. They've got an amazing um, tint of orange to the inside of them. Possibly give them a, a good scrub and then a run through the dishwasher, steam cleaner and things like that. Very nervous about breaking those because usually a full section is quite difficult to find, I've found. So I'm quite happy with that. And the last piece of the puzzle is the actual machine itself. So this is now out. It actually weighs a lot less than I thought it would. But it's actually bigger again than I thought it would be. So um, 16 inches wide by um, 20 inches tall. Um, condition wise, uh, I know that a lot of people get there just focus there. Um, I know a lot of people get a little bit of work done on the motors. I know this motor works, so maybe just need to clean out. But I'm hoping the heater works as well. Um, it's got a safety sticker on the plug from 2019. So when the last time it was actually used uh, for watchmaking, I have no idea. But looking at the colour of those things, um, I hope it wasn't recently. Right, so again, this absolutely stinks. Um, I'm not even sure of what the, the make of this is. Um, we've got a, a rather suspect looking power cable. It seems to have some kind of a connector at the top there. Uh, motor. No markings that I can see on the motor. Um, obviously, that's quite nice that they are the original jars because they fit in the bottom. Uh, this is all steel. I think that's steel. Yeah, it's like st steel plate. Um, my intention was to restore it and I might use it myself or I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it yet because this thing is way bigger than I thought it would be. <laughs> uh, we've got on off switch. Um, what looks like a potentiometer for the speed of the motor. I'm presuming this is a heater switch with a red light there. Uh, and just the condition of it is absolutely minging. It's a delicious flavour of brown, which I really like actually. Um, it should. I hope that brown paints up nicely. Uh, so it polishes up nicely. As for identification, I have no actual idea what it is there seems to be like a identification plate here and all we've got there is if you watch you focus s69 tap what that is or means i don't actually know yet underneath again significant amount of i don't know what that is uh someone's cleaned up the middle bit there with a the power cable running down someone's fitted a cable but that cable is going to get replaced anyway. I intend to. Um, otherwise, it actually looks in, in reasonable condition. Hopefully, this is free and on a spring, I'd like to think. Yeah, I've got a, on a spring up the middle. Very, very gritty. Um, but it does turn nice and freely. Goes all the way to the top just 
and it spins around nicely as well and clicks into place for the next basket that's nice uh, we've got our connector here it is a little Need a little bit of loose on the end of the shaft there that'll just focus and not on my bike collection um, that's a bit loose seems to be on with a pin so maybe we can re-drill and re-pin that but uh, the allowing keys there presumably if I can just find the this bit this is going to sit this seems to be aluminium, this bit sits in there like that and then presumably these pins and puts pressure on the basket perhaps to uh, let's give it a try so if I put the basket in there uh, what lids have we got? we've got a lid okay so I've never used one of these before, so I'm not entirely sure how one goes about putting it together. It seems to sit in like a recess. This is really difficult to fill and uh, operate one handed at the same time. So that seems to sit. Alright, yep, yeah, we got it. So, basket sits inside there. Uh, put the lid on the basket and obviously anything else that you need to, need to use yourself. Let's see if I can do this one handed as well. I'm hoping that that, the pressure from the top of the basket, <laughs> not even look at what I'm doing. So the pressure from the top of the basket up on these little fins keeps your basket in place. As I said, this is definitely wobbly and needs repinning, but that's. That's pretty secure, actually. Okay. So, I have to take the risk and plug it in and see what happens. I didn't notice there's another... I'm hoping that's a timer. Yes! And I'm hoping that timer operates like a cutout. I'm not sure if it will. Um, the heater in there. Difficult to see, but I hope that works as well. The time works, so that's one thing that's good. It says it's just cut out actually. Hopefully underneath this. That's disgusting. Hopefully underneath that, it'll have some kind of indication as to what time we're working. Uh, struggling to run, so maybe that needs a service as well. Um, and I'm hoping one of the jars doesn't have a crack in it because of all that in the bottom of there. Um, but uh, we plugged it in. I'm just going to turn it on. So that's got power to it now. Make sure nothing's in the way of this. And let's try and investigate what actually any of this does. Um, oh. It's winding up. And that works. really well actually well, that's definitely too fast right okay is the heater gonna work the bulb's not working there's some kind of a there's a on and off indication i'm not sure mm, i'll leave it on and we'll see what happens this is deciding to do its own thing now. Let's turn that off for now. Um, I presume that that doesn't stop this. So maybe it's got an alarm on it or something, but we'll, we'll get this all taken apart and clean it in my other watchmaking cleaning machine. Um, that does feel warm actually. Yeah, the heater works as well. Amazing, so that is on. I'm gonna write on in dirt, I think, and I'll put a line for off. Well, that means to anybody, but yeah, heating amazing. So maybe that just needs a 
a new bulb. Oh, the clock started ticking as well. So, so that's fully wound there. Yeah, that's probably if it's covered in whatever this is, then that's going to be the the same. But happy days. So basically, from what I can work out, it's just absolutely monkey. Um, this is good. Needs a good clean and whatever else. And this little this little badge just needs. I'm going to redrill and repin this. But basically, we take everything apart now. Um, probably once I've removed all the electrics. Probably degrease and jet wash it if I'm honest with you. I'd like to keep this paint underneath. This oh, it's like an amazing baker light brown kind of colour. It's not baker light, but it has that it has that colour and with the polish I think this is gonna come up amazing. That is toasty, there's actually some smoke coming off it. <laughs> um it's not coming off the electrics, which is good. I've got a pretty low amperage breaker in the garage, but um, oh, I'm really happy with that. So, so everything works. Hopefully, if I turn it off, that will go off. But we'll see. But again, it's all painted with this this amazing brown. Oh, it just feels like the fifties all in one place. Um, so yeah, pretty happy. I feel actually dirtier for touching this stuff, but um, what's really nice is these little fins on the side here. These actually just give enough friction on the on the jars to uh, keep them in place. Um, I've got a lid. It's a little bit different. That's fine. Heat has gone off, so switch works. But we we'll get a multimeter out anyway. Um, but this is good, right? I actually feel like I need a shower now. I've had this out. I'm going to do some investigating and try and find out what the make is, hopefully from that serial number, and we'll see where we get. Right, give these an individual clean. Sun missing a bit somewhere. Yeah. And I'll go in the dishwasher, I think. But the wife would be none too pleased if I find through the dishwasher full of God knows what. So everything's getting a wash in what is essentially industrial degreaser. It is better. It's not amazing. It's still full of bits, but get off whatever greases and oils are in there before they go through the dishwasher oh, it's coming off wherever it once was came out really well and they all match British made 102 JBK um, I've got seal number 5056 British made that one seems slightly different uh, pretty much the same get the state of this this is disgusting mmm came out amazing um, the glassware Really solid, sturdy jars made in England. Uh, all the lids made in England match as well. I managed to get all this rouge, I presume it was, from all the gaps and stuff with a toothbrush and some heavy degreaser. Uh, two lids the same. No, they're actually all completely different, uh, which is maybe a way of differentiating. 
I don't know. There, one's got notches, small notches, no circles, small notches, circles, no circles, large notches. I'm sure there's some kind of ancient uh, indication as to what's what. Uh, for when you start filling these full of rinse and clean agent and things like that. But everything can go in there now. I've got what I thought was chemicals off it. And then it's going in the dishwasher for a 90 degree. Uh, and let it steam clean and dry. And yeah, and we'll go from there. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to tackle is dismantling this. Um, first things first. Get rid of that. I'm going to rewire, rewire the lock. Alright, so because the power cable goes into this clockwork part, I have a feeling it might have a cutout on it. Because the power cable is white and yet this power cable is grey. Let's just focus on it. This one's grey. So, this whatever this clockwork device is anyway, it's going to need servicing um, and oiling and whatnot. So, um, I thought I'd take this off first and see what we've got. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. So, a clock. Well, that should be pretty straightforward to service uh, in a workshop. So, okay, we have a timer. <laughs> All right. So next thing I'm going to do is get rid of. The uh, screw on connectors for the switches. I'm hoping I can remove all the wiring, basically, like a giant kind of like a giant wiring loom, and then completely re re rewire it. Heat shield protection there. So hopefully this should come right off. He says. All right. Some kind of plastic sleeve in there is to protect it as it rotates. Because as you rotate this. It rotates inside uh, inside the pole there. This is a pin there, stopping the spring from pinging out. Let's see if I can get that out. Not with one hand. All right, there we go. Grub screw. And the shaft. Hoping the spring will. Nope. Everything is stuck together with God knows what. It's quite possibly connected on the bottom there. Actually, just uh, it's the whole cover that comes off. Okay. All right. So now those screws are off. The whole unit separates, and there's our wiring. Pretty straightforward heater. Wiring looks in pretty good nick actually. But I'm gonna uh, we sold and replace all that, especially the 240 stuff. Get rid of those chop blocks. Um, they look like they've seen. Seen their best of times. Um, all right, and then we're left with the base. Big heavy duty bit of steel. Um, underneath is equally as manky as the rest of it. But that should clean up quite nicely, I think. I don't know why our, our red light wasn't working. Sounds like I got soldering that in the past, and that's yeah, that's uh, melted away. But uh, 
switches all look pretty good. The heat is a basic. Uh, basic heater. Looks in pretty good nick. This looks like a Spestos to me, which is uh, always a pleasant surprise. Not. Nice knot in there to, for safety, you know. So I'll uh, disconnect all these little uh, bolts there. And uh, I'm not sure this is connected in just yet. I think I can pull the, the handle off the top. And hopefully all that can come away and then I can work on replacing everything. Uh, like for like for some new wiring. Obviously somebody's had a good going here before me, which is a bit worrying seeing as everything's 240. Um, let's uh, excuse my hand. So wiring for the LED light. One end was at this, which I presume is the earth from the plug. And then the other end's been wired into, someone's had a good go at some point. The other end was wired into uh, the positive feed. It's a bit worrying all this, is very close to bare metal and these little connections are all kind of very, very close to basically uh, making the entire casing live which is a bit worrying but we'll sort that right that's all the wiring out uh, the pain actually was this the control knob for the speed because I thought it was a pull off and found a little hole there absolutely jammed full of gunk and uh, flatted screw everything's flatted screws whether that's a good sign or not, I don't know. To me, it's uh, it's a kind of mood 50s, 60s British thing. Um, that says Cressol 5.50 England. Uh, Birmingham. I might mean, even put in focus. Cressol, Birmingham. I love that everything's made in England. Um, I've not even got to that bit yet, but uh, I think we'll do that last. I'm going to restore all this stuff first and then take it from there. But the uh, the case come off uh, absolutely fine. It's all one piece. The heater uh, heater tube there is pressed in, so I'm going to leave that in when I clean it. And all the little um, chop blocks were in with screws, so purely to remind me where the chop blocks go. That's going to stay like that. Um, the wiring I'll make up a little diagram and then. Cut everything out, clean everything up, try and stay away from that, which I presume is asbestos. It kind of looks like asbestos. I might try and remove it. Um, uh, I'm not sure really. I think what I might do is I might kind of see if I can lacquer it or something. But to be fair, asbestos, as long as you don't mess about with it and you don't lick it and you don't chop it or anything, if the fibers kind of stay stuck together, probably. But what can you do? Um, I can't do anything about sealing it because it's obviously it's a heater so it's going to get hot but uh, all that stuff there I'll come back and uh, we'll put some modern wiring on it some modern heat seal all this varnished heat seal is all cracked and knackered so we'll get rid of that uh, so onto cleaning the base and the lid I'm going to clean that scrub it degrease it and I think I'm just going to polish it alright so base cleaned up pretty well i thought this was rusty actually but the whole thing is uh it's cast aluminium with a uh, chromed steel pipe up the middle and a spring held in place with a grub screw um it looks like someone's replaced a grub screw at some point because it's an allen key four mil uh and the spring is obviously it's actually well greased i think someone's done a little bit of maintenance to it Whatever this is here, uh, it's gonna have to scrape it off, I think. And I imagine that looks like varnish. Maybe it's been ended up being stuck to a varnish of a table or something's leaked, I don't know. But um, it isn't easy to get it off. I need something a little bit more abrasive, but not so abrasive it takes everything off. And what I thought was the, the sleeve in the middle here being totally knackered, it's not. This is old grease, which is slowly come off and still there's a little bit more to come off as well there's a bit of a weld around it as a stopper I imagine um, I could do it against some scotch bright really uh, and give it a good going over but I don't want to lose the chroming so uh, it's a balance really and trying to get this I mean it is caked on absolutely caked on so uh, we'll keep going and we'll see what we can do with it Alright, so day two, 
uh, a little bit of progress. Uh, the base is now basically completely as restored as I think I'm going to get it. We've got all the old grease off, all the old rouge, so that is what it is. Uh, found out what it is. It's a National Mark V, uh, which is a little bit unusual. Let's say it focus. A little bit unusual, I'd say, that it's fully British made because the timer I have actually restored and uh, is Kenzel, which is German. So uh, a little bit of a crossover of nations there. So the brown is spray paint. I've tried everything to get it off and, and not damage the original paintwork underneath. I've tried petrol, thinners, G3, T-cut, everything, and there was no taking it off. So I think what I'm going to have to do is respray this uh, in cream. So I've been rubbing this down this morning and I'll have to see where it goes with that one. Hopefully I'll get that finished today. And the rewiring's done. This is all rewired now. Uh, a lot tidier. The LED... I say LED, the bulb was knackered, so these two are for the bulb, which I need to solder in after it's fixed into there. Um, aside from that, everything else was pretty straightforward, and all the old wiring was very ropey. I've retained these old uh, chop blocks because they're actually in pretty good shape, and you know, if I can retain something, then why not that? And plus, you have the little nice little screw all in the middle, which attaches with some brass screws to the underside of here. Um, the heater, uh, I don't know what you describe it, surround, pops out, that's going to have to be sanded as well. You can see the difference in the two paints. Uh, a lot of it actually had cream paint that had just turned to goo, which I presume was from uh, extended exposure to uh, watch clear materials. Um, the asbestos on the bottom of the heater, uh, that's got, got rid of that. Uh, and this piece here is, as you're looking into the heater, uh, this is what you're looking at. So I might replace that screw, I think, as well, and clean up that bit of bit of metal in the top there. But um, the heater itself is basically just a, a coiled wire and uh, these little porcelain uh, washers is to protect your wiring from a bit of heat. So I tried to retain as many as I could. Some of them are shattered. Um, other than that, the pot looks in good nick, clean that up, switches all work, we tested all them as well and I've put an earth on it as well because I didn't have an earth on before So and some triple core wire, put a new cable on, new, uh, new plug and whatnot and then once that's all done, once this is done, I've got the wiring reassembled and the base all finished uh, we'll stick the uh, logo sign back on, not a lot I can really do with that, I think that's about as safe as I'm going to get it without removing the original paintwork. Uh, I didn't remove any of that black paintwork underneath. This has come out uh, through basically, I, I did sand it down as close as I could and tea cut it, which was just frustrating, but it is what it is. So we'll get this built together today. A little bit of rouge left in this uh, little focus. A little bit of rouge left in there as well. It's Bakelite, I'm gonna keep that. And hopefully the next time I come back, it'll all be rewired and ready for the motor strip down. Alright, so that's the base and a uh, heater container now sprayed in cream. It came up really nice, I see. It's not perfect, um, but let's be honest, for something like this, it, it probably was never perfect when it came out the factory. So, looking forward to getting all the bits together now and getting it back together and finished. Alright, really happy with this. This took a, a significant while to get this running, but it's essentially a, a timer, uh, bog standard sort of 40s uh, clock. Kenzel signal, which is interesting as everything else is covered in made in England, whereas this is quite clearly German. Um, the casing all polished up nice. I think the rouge did a good job at protecting the metalwork actually. Um, the clock works inside, it was pretty straightforward, stripped it down, gave it a service, and ticks away nicely let's see if I can get it to to chime which it does but because the back is the bell yeah you gotta have it suspended by the the outer uh, ring beautiful so I'm really happy with that that'll just screw back in the top there once uh, once I've got my lacquer on everything painted so we've done quite a decent amount of work today on this um, as I say, the rewiring's all done. 
uh, I've actually re rewired it and put a little bit of heat shrink on some of the connectors because they are a little bit exposed and with everything being uh, different varying types of metal uh, I don't particularly want the whole thing to become live while I'm using it alright so moving on to the motor side of things um, this is a mount this is come unstuck from the motor basically due to a, a seized nut which isn't really a problem and then uh, I managed to get this off I had to drill out the pin which isn't really an issue because I'd like to drill the whole thing and fit uh, a better fitting connection uh, I've cleaned the motor up uh, add it all to bits re-grease the bearings I think this is a new motor because uh, the wiring isn't black and red it's more recent brown and blue so it's quite nice actually because someone has replaced the motor someone has taken care of it at some point um, the bushes going on springs through these side bits here and they are we just look on my there's a bit of mess everywhere uh, so our bushings on springs a couple of grub screws there um, and that's the shaft that the uh, the holder for the, the cage was originally on so um, I was going to repaint this as well but I think I'm going to return the original paint on a motor uh, maybe stick a layer of polish on it it's cleaned up quite well actually it's had a bit of a tea cut to get some of the some of the stains and the rubbish off but I think we can maybe do a bit better and get some of these smudges off as well and then the last thing the paint is basically this uh, the mount for the motor which goes on that way so uh, we'll rub this brown down give it a good wash give it a spray uh, it's a bit damp outside today so we'll have to have a look and see how we go and then the rest of it's in pretty good condition just needs a bit of a wipe down and yeah, so that's what we'll do today <laughs> all right so because the motor ran i wasn't going to do anything about it but the more i cleaned it the more i saw the wiring and i thought yeah this isn't good so this bit is your, uh, your centre section here of the motor sits on a bearing at the end there and also sits on a bearing at the bottom of this they're basically the same as skateboard bearings you can replace them if you want uh, dead easy to get on ebay just type in the cord and they're like a couple of quid so uh, this is actually in really good condition I'm happy with that so I ain't going to do anything necessarily to that uh, I'm quite happy with it the bearings are fine they've been recently greased actually which is quite nice but so this is the wiring for the other half of the motor and as you can see uh, insulation has broken down um, on both sides and this is all absolutely toast man so I mean it's an easy fix but from the outside this looked absolutely fine it's just a fire hazard um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I think I'm going to because these go directly into the windings and whatnot of the motor I'm a bit wary of how far to take it back I don't want to lose it in there so I think I think I'm going to try and remove as much of this I'm going to try and get the wires back to maybe about an inch and then uh, soldering some wires heat shrink all new heat shrink at all uh, and especially these this mess of a of wiring here um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go get the wiring I planned on using to wire this to the base and then it's all soldered together heat shrunk all nice um, I think I had some heat shrink yesterday um, where it is I don't know it's not a problem I can get some more heat shrink but uh, yeah so like you, you might have one of these and, and it looks fine from the outset but I tell you what this original wiring is toast so that's what we gonna do today all right fast forward about an hour i had to go down to uh, a friendly car shop and get some heat shrink which uh, for which i owe about 30 pence for um this is all cleaned up and rewired now uh removed all the knackered old heat shrink we got in there uh, some fresh new wire in there and cleaned it all up with a bit of alcohol and a bit of emery paper on the, the motor brushes and whatnot but uh, generally the trick is now try and fit all that back in the lid of that motor without knacking 
the wiring when it wants to spin so that might be a trick I might have to employ a couple of little cable ties around the lid there maybe to keep everything out of the way but the pain in the backside is lining these uh, prong things up with where your bushes go in there um, so <laughs> it's going to be a challenge it's like lining a bridge up basically by the look of it you've got to do about 18 things at once with three sets of hands um, but we'll see how we get with it Right, so that was, uh, to put it politely, a swine of a job. Uh, trying to get everything all lined up. But it's all back together now. You can see in the top there, managed to get all of your wiring done. All nice and neat. Um, I even managed to get some yellow heat shrink, which is quite nice. Uh, and it means you've got a nice power cable there, which can go on the mount. And then all the way back down into the base. Uh, Spins really well, really happy with that. Uh, obviously time will tell whether we plug it in and it spins as much as you want, but uh, I'm just going to put all these bushings and that back in now. And then once these are back in, this one goes in these side ports here. So these kind of sit. Apologies for my... Just trying to move my hand around. They kind of sit in there. And then they're held in place with these bits. He says it's not easy to do this uh, and film at the same time. I suppose it's not easy to do anything and film at the same time. Um, so uh, I'm just waiting for that to ping out all over my face now. There's that one. did it <laughs> through the magic of camera uh, and then that means that they rub on those top they rub on those top bushings there It'll be a bit rough until it starts going but yeah uh, we'll get it plugged in and we'll get it tested and make sure it runs and doesn't set fire to the place uh, it's got that other shaft to put in there this is basically like a threaded bar that goes all the way to the top and then in the little hole there, you have these little grub screws. And those grub screws uh, just retain the pressure on that threaded bar. Otherwise, you can't get it actually tightened. And then that's where it connects to the uh, the cleaning machine itself. So. All right, so the next step is solving uh, the amount of plate that was in this kind of intermediate shaft that bolts onto the bottom of the motor. Uh, this is still in place with this grub screw and that fits fine. Uh, this has developed a bit of play between this intermediate shaft and sort of the final shaft for that. When it's tight in, it's pretty good actually. So when this is forced all the way in, it's good, but it was in with what looked like a, a nail or something. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to four mil drill straight through all of it and then fit a, uh, a stainless allen bolt and a nut on the end and then just trim the bolt down to fit uh, and hopefully obviously you can see by the, the pressure in the vise I've got the pressure on this part here it is nipping it onto that as well which is going to retain that centralization hopefully so uh, I'm going to go through here and then bolt it together and uh, maybe put a bit of PTFE on the inside of there just to take any up any any other play um, and then that'll be ready to fit back on the motor Alright, in the words of Tommy Cooper, just like that. No play whatsoever. Held in place there with a nut and a bolt. Stainless as well. I, I, I don't I, I hate anything other than stainless if I'm honest with you. Um I might even give this shaft a bit of a buff up actually because it's just a bit tired in it. Uh but that's the nice little solution. It means that if anything happens, should this break or anything like that, then uh, you can pull it off in the future. But no play whatsoever. Nice and tight. Alright, there we go. Quick buff. Uh, nice new shortened grub screw in the top there. And then this will then fit onto 
bottom of the shaft is really tight fit and then this screw it's not a grub screw i said grub screw but it's not this screw will just keep it in place uh, that's a really tight fit actually so i'm quite happy with that and yeah looks smart happy with that all right so i didn't take much of a picture or video of painting the base cream so uh this is the stone for the mortar uh it's a little bit lighter than the mortar i'll be honest with you but i'd like to retain that paintwork for the mortar uh so this is kind of what i'm going to finish with today uh, i'm gonna let this dry and then we'll put some lacquer on it tomorrow and then we can get everything attached uh and built and get it up and running all right so that's the uh the bracket got the baker like knob back on uh motors attached i've managed to completely lose one of these m3 nuts from somewhere so i'll, I'll have to dig one of them out but uh all this fit really well no play no movement whatsoever that's just balance at the moment on the uh on the motor down in the table but uh the paint isn't too bad of a match this cream seems to have kind of like a pink through it it's really strange but i'm quite happy with it because it's it, it maybe maybe adds a bit of age to it um uh, but basically that's done so i'm going to give it a little bit longer to dry for go attach it onto the uh the rest of the cleaning machine which is painted and almost assembled so i'm going to do a little bit of a uh, run round on the rest of the cleaning machine because I sat last night for about half an hour and uh, put all the wiring in and all the rest of the stuff and then I realised that I need to run it from inside the motor and then out because it needs soldering inside so I need to go and ditch the old wiring off the rest of it first and then we can attach this um, one thing I've noticed is I think this is like a locating pin for your four places and settings uh the cleaning machine doesn't seem to have this whether it's missing a sleeve or something i don't know so you have to manually kind of position it to what jar you want to use next um but yeah it looks all right actually it looks pretty good there's a little bit of rouge on the top of there still um i'll probably get that off with a bit of a rag or some peril or something but um yeah i'm really happy with the rest of it uh picked up a new plug as well so i'm going to stick a new plug on it um i'm watching my videos back i realize i say um a lot uh, it's probably because i'm not particularly used to making these kind of things but there we go all right guys so this is a bit of a funny one really because i uh, i lost a bit of footage of doing the painting and the building of the base uh i've got some pictures which i'll hopefully put as part of the video uh but the the brown paint was like terribly painted over the original enamel and then it turns out the enamel was knackered underneath so i couldn't save that so it ended up getting resprayed so um i'll take you through what i've done here and what i've got left to do and then hopefully we can get it span up and working so uh i'll start at the top so as you've seen in a couple of the videos i managed to get the motor all sorted rewired and uh, got it mounted on this, this sliding piece here um i thought originally that the the machine was missing a piece so underneath here you'll notice there's a pin which to me looks like a locating pin so that when you bring it down it's located for each of the four positions but what there is on the uh if i can just find it what there is on the side around here there's a little pin at the top of the spring here which i believe is it but what I've done is I've ordered uh, basically a mild steel collar in 25 mil. This is 25 and a half mil. So the intention is to stick a mild steel collar on there, uh, drill it for four positions to the size of this pin, just to make it a bit more solid. Because there is quite a bit of play when you select your four positions, and there's a danger that this cage and whatnot is going to start banging off the balls or banging off the heater, which is a bit rubbish. So whether it's a modification, all the other ones I've seen online don't have that. So how it's positioned um, or retained in a position other than just tightening this, which seems a bit rubbish to me. So, uh, so the motor's on. Um, it's all bolted on underneath. Uh, there isn't a guard on this one per se. So some of them have a guard. So when you put it over the top of a jar, uh, you're not splashing everything. This is the guard, uh, which explains why the paintwork underneath was so knackered over years of stuff splashing at it. So this is the guard. It goes all the way down on top of the bottle. 
uh, on top of the jar, sorry, and hopefully if I get a collar put on there, then that'll also um, just give us a bit more somewhere for it to stop. You know, it will stop kind of on a set of stops here due to where the spring ends in the in the shaft there. But um, that is that. Uh, the spring inside has been all sorted and re-greased. There's a bit of chrome coming off on this chromium thing. So this is kind of, uh, can be a bit bitty in places, which is what it is. There's nothing I can do about over and placing that, which is about the same as a bike seat, but it's part of the alloy base and I can't bother changing it. But I don't think it needs changing. Uh, I've got the wiring loom all in, finished. Uh, the heater, cleaned all that up. All the wiring's in, the timer's in, which ticks away nicely. Um, that's lovely, actually. That needed to be just fully serviced. These uh, brass screws are what holds the chop block in from underneath. And on the front here, we have uh, on-off for the motor, the potentiometer giving the speed for the motor, on-off for the heater, and then an indication light for the heater being on. Let me just turn this off, otherwise it'll be... There you go, I've got a bell that works. And that kind of times out in a second. I had to get a new 240 light for this because it was just not really that safe. So I picked one of these up off eBay, 240 volt. Uh, it was about £2.20 delivered. And that goes inside. And then something that I've put somewhere that I can't find. There is a, a, a plastic nut that goes from underneath and retains that in place. And then I've got some heat shrink here for these two wires as well because I like I'd like to have these terminals covered up underneath the same as everything else I've covered all the terminals up properly and done a decent bit of wiring on it because all it takes is for you to put your hand there and you're getting straight 240. The whole thing, as I say, is 240, so a bit of safety really. So I managed to kind of save the original plate on the front. It's obviously covered in brown paint and it always was. But it, uh, there was no more really taking off any more of the brown paint. But I managed to retain the, the name, motor for the switch, slow, fast and heater. There's no real indication on the slow, fast, which I'm not sure if there ever was, but there isn't one. Uh, so I managed to retain that, which is kind of nice, kind of not as nice as what a new one would be like. But that's the way it is. And then I've probably still all the screws up as well and cleaned all those. So... We're ready today. I'm going to go solder uh, this lamp in and heat shrink over the, the the connectors and get that all sorted. The heater surround is kind of press fit, really. It just kind of slides in. So uh, I've just removed it now for ease of accessing the wiring, but that just basically slides in there with a bit of pressure. I've not painted it all the way down on purpose because it's only going to melt anyway. So it's only really painted at the top. But um, I think I've got a good colour that almost matches this. This is maybe a bit more pink. Uh, but with time, hopefully it'll settle down a little bit. The jars are all sorted and and, and, and cleaned. So I think the, f the first job to do once I get the, the light working and the motor running up properly will be to probably wash all the cages as to not... Uh, get any kind of contamination with new cleaning fluid but it looks quite smart once you get all the jars in there is one that seems a little bit wider i'm not sure maybe it's just the fins on the on the machine i think this one is a tiny bit wider it just has a little bit more of a, a press fit when you put it in um but it looks quite smart actually i'm quite happy with it originals would have a, a, a kind of donut on the top here to stop this from rubbing that's something i could maybe investigate somehow to so do it maybe using a bike bar end or something with a hole drilled out i might look into that because it's not sharp but over 20 years you might end up with the wire rubbing through or something but it's easy to remove that wire it's down through there and then a chop block underneath so it should be pretty straightforward uh all the cabling as i say is all new and a nice new 13 amp plug as well which we've tested and then i'll get it electrical tested as well just for um confidence really so right, i'm going to go solder this lamp in and then we'll see uh probably do a bit of a test fire on it i want to double check on the wiring first and then start it up and see what happens all right so i had some fun and games with this actually 
So, uh, wired it all up, got it all sorted, uh, turned it on, and motor spun fine, everything worked fine, and dogs just come to see who I'm talking to. And uh, the heater didn't work, the light worked, but the heater didn't work. So, got the multimeter out, traced everything, and the light basically uh, had died. <laughs> it's rated to 240, it had died. It caused uh, a drop in the connection, obviously, which caused the heater to stop working. So what I've done is I basically, for now, until I can get another lamp, I've bypassed the lamp. So uh, the heater is just switched on from the, the own controls. Um, I really could do with a light on it so that you know that there's a, you know, the heat is obviously going to be hot. But I'm going to have to find a, a reasonable supplier for a, for a lamp. Funny enough, Chinese uh, eBay lamps just maybe aren't what they once were. Um, but uh, we're plugged in now and uh, if you turn it on there with the, the pot turned all the way down you get a tiny tiny little bit of voltage out of it enough to turn it a tiny little bit which is kind of annoying but fine you just have to turn it off before you put a cage on and then as the pot goes up that will kick into action uh, and you can fine tune it actually the, the speed you can run it at is actually pretty good uh, you got slow and fast all the way up to uh, lightning speed no sparks in the motor or anything which is good which I'm happy with uh, the motor sounds nice bearings sound nice all the way off and then the heater coming on there the heater then works as well but unfortunately uh, it doesn't seem to like that lamp which is a bit frustrating but it is what it is um, so success, successful rewiring and um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cage on it um, put some kind of a soapy solution in one of the jars and go through the cages, give them a spin and give them a, a clean out and you know see if I can find a golden speed where um, we're going to want it when we're doing watch cleaning because you, you should be looking apparently for the water, the clean solution to rise about an inch up the uh, the jar when it's spinning anything more than that is a bit too fast the, uh, the prongs on here are uh, designed to mix up the uh, the solution as as it's cleaning some of them have no prongs i've seen some with brass baskets which just turns the cleaning solution green straight away so i'm happy this is a bakelite uh holder and uh, i think i'm probably going to give this one final clean there's a bit of rouge in there so you stop any cross contamination but all in all i think we are about there all right so uh what i was talking about about uh, this center bit being on a stop it is actually the stop is the pole so that's good so when you put it all the way down to the bottom of the stop uh this will sit at the correct height for where you want i've probably not got as much water in there as what you would maybe want but i'm going to turn it all the way down uh give it a bit of a test flash the dog's absolutely scared to death for this thing i'm not sure why he's scared of the iron though so that's fine so uh we'll flick that on and then we'll see what kind of uh don't want to spray water everywhere is the only thing and there we go and there's maybe not uh, enough water in there or you know I wouldn't have that much cleaning fluid in there maybe but this bit obviously acts as the cover for the glass um, <laughs> I'm just amazed at how much my dog doesn't like it um, but that seems to be swirling away quite nicely there um and well that's it really you know, that kind of brings us to the end of our little project uh it's cleaning away not noisy it's not sparking i'm happy that it's all nice and safe electrical wise i honestly i don't like the way that the, it's not amazingly safe when you've got liquids around and you've got the wires in the, in the in the case there but i suppose that's the same with anything it's electrical and uh you just have to be as safe as possible with it you know um but i guess that's always been the case now and in the 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 40s 50s 60s when these were more popular um but uh, yeah there we go doing its job quite nicely there i'm not entirely sure how that seems to be actually kind of max chat there it's maybe quite slowed a bit down because we're in the water um, I might be going a bit fast there actually. Uh, 
But there'll be a sweet spot, and you'll find that sweet spot somewhere along the way, no doubt. It's definitely different when it's uh, in liquid compared to when it's in air, which sounds a bit obvious now that we see it. But uh, I'm going to lift this out and uh, swill it off, give the heater maybe a bit of a test, and, and that's it. Uh, and then I think it will be up on eBay uh, on some of the groups. I don't actually have the room for it. I have a quite a nice little setup already going. I just enjoyed the project of rescuing it. So uh, if you have any questions or anything about it, then uh, please feel free to get back to me. Okay. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully it's not been an absolute waste of time and you've enjoyed it. And anybody who's considering doing this, hopefully it's given you some tips as to what you need to do with it and what's involved. All right. Have a good day.